Let's talk about W A I Python A R I A or Web Accessibility Initiative Python Accessible Rich Internet Applications for Long. What is ARIA really, and how exactly does it make you rich? In WebAIM survey of one million home pages, they found that pages including ARIA a technology designed specifically to make web pages more accessible actually had 11.2000 more accessibility errors on average than without. Understandably, this prompted a great many people to pick up their pitchforks and begin chanting Diarrhea! Diarrhea! Is ARIA bad for accessibility? No, it's V good, but only if you use it correctly. That's what this video is all about. To understand ARIA, you first have to understand semantic HTML, or HTML. The difference between a semantic HTML element and an unsemantic one is that the semantic one has meaning that can be read and acted upon by a machine, such as this one, programmed by a woman. I'm Ida Lovelace, and I programmed the first ever computer. Go cry about it, baby dick, laughing my ass off. For example, a computer that encounters an H1 element knows it represents a first level heading and should have an appropriately large, bold font style. Semantic HTML isn't just for adding user agent styles you never f***ing wanted in the first place and will no doubt override with your own CSS or s s s Because web pages aren't just typeset text like the book Harry Potter and the Pensioner of Azkaban by Robert Galbraith is just typeset text. They are structures that we navigate and interfaces that we activate. One way of making this navigation and activation accessible is to make these things compatible with tools like screen readers. Where the HTML is just text and unsemantic elements, that's all the screen reader gets. Harry Potter blah blah. Blah. Blah blah. Blah. Expecto patronum. Blah. 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 Gryffindor. With a careful use of semantic HTML, the screen reader can identify important parts of the interface and provide shortcuts between them. Navigation. List 5 items. Harry Potter and the Pensioner of Cabin by Robert Galbraith. Heading level 1. It's all about cues. Not that kind of cue, and definitely not that kind. It's about converting visual cues into non-visual ones. But if we have semantic HTML already, why do we need ARIA? Or to put it another way, why? In brief, ARIA is another way of giving your HTML semantics. It's a supplement, like horny goat weed. If your goat is already stoned and horny, you do not need to give him any horny goat weed supplement. Similarly, if your HTML is already suitably semantic, you do not need to add ARIA on top. It's redundant. But you can use ARIA to add semantics where they are missing. For example, text that looks and is used like a first level heading, but doesn't use the H1 element, would benefit from the ARIA attributes role equals heading and ARIA level equals 1. Of course, you could just change the underlying element, which would save a lot of characters, so... Yes. You can also use ARIA to take away semantics that shouldn't be there. A classic example is the layout table, a data table repurposed just to achieve a visual layout. Using role equals presentation on the outer table element removes the table semantics. Technically, layout tables should have been eradicated circa 2002, so if you do encounter one, say encased in fossilized tree resin or similar, please do not try to extract and revive it. That would be a f***ing disaster. Where people go wrong is treating ARIA like garlic, adding it in vast quantities everywhere, expecting this to somehow make everything better. As with everything in the observed universe except garlic, the important thing is quality, not quantity. A common error is to make a button accessible by giving an unsemantic div element the button role. The trouble is that you are telling screen readers the div is a button without making it behave like one. 
It can't be focused using the keyboard, activated with the enter key or disabled correctly with the disabled property. It's like pointing at a fire extinguisher and saying, check out this goat. Here, adding ARIA makes the interface more confusing and therefore less accessible. The native button element has all of the behaviors you need already and it already implicitly has the button role, meaning adding role equals button does f all. Where ARIA comes in useful is in extending semantics in ways that native HTML cannot. Yes, it's an extender. For example, we might want to add state to our generic button to make it a toggle button. The closest thing native HTML can offer is the checkbox with its checked state. Check it, check it, check it out, sure. It's difficult to style and is identified as an input to screen readers, so it's not really appropriate. Instead, we can add the press state to our button with ARIA pressed using JavaScript to toggle between the true and false of values. Press me, select it, toggle button. Just because we've added an ARIA state attribute doesn't mean we have to include role equals button alongside it. The state knows the role is there implicitly. Another mistake is to accidentally override important semantics. Unlike Schrodinger's famously undead cat, HTML elements cannot be two things at once. That is, if you put a button roll on an H2, it is no longer a second level heading to the browser or any screen reader running. It's just a button, and a broken one at that, because it doesn't have the correct behaviours, again! The solution, as any bird who has housed their young in a rancid lattice of twigs, mud and spittle will tell you, is By nesting a button element inside the H2, the semantics and behaviours of each element are preserved. The screen reader still identifies the heading and applies the heading shortcut to it, the ARIA expanded state tells the user whether the button has expanded or collapsed the contents the heading introduces. Heading level 2, A section in the page, expanded, button. A quick way to reset the button styles and make the button look like the heading is to apply all inherit to the button element. In summary, ARIA can help make interfaces more compatible with assistive software like screen readers. Yes, that means blind people, but also visually impaired people, dyslexic folks, and anyone who wants to convert a web page into an ad hoc podcast or audiobook. But mostly you can do this and more efficiently with native semantic HTML. So only use ARIA to repair HTML or to add semantics native HTML doesn't offer. Remember that ARIA doesn't make HTML accessible, it makes inaccessible HTML accessible. And don't forget that HTML accessibility is only part of accessibility. Finally, do not give sexual health supplements to goats, especially if they are already in a heightened state of arousal. Hey, hey, it's the interweb. Hey, hey, it's the interweb. Hey, hey, it's the interweb.